What's going on everybody? Good morning. So today, Saturday, beautiful Saturday morning here, we have a Freightliner Cascadia with the DD15 2011-2012. So this is going to be EPA 10, EPA 10. So it does have the DEF system. We did have the solid yellow light and customer told me the other day he actually had the check engine light. So we had both of them together. We were able to plug in and see what was going on. So I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. I'm gonna show you hopefully how we can repair that and hopefully get that all done today. So right now we are plugged in. Let's take a quick look, let everything connect and do what it's gonna do. You're gonna go over to your fault code. You're gonna get a new drop down coming in right there. So let that load up and uh, I'll show you exactly what it's Okay guys, so the other day when the truck came in, we did have these codes here. SCR outlet knock sensor circuit failed high. SCR knock sensor circuit failed low. So we either have a bad sensor or we have a bad harness. What I'm gonna do is actually replace both. I'm gonna replace the NOx outlet and I'm going to replace the, um, the harnesses. There's two harnesses in there. I'm gonna show you them right now in a second, but I wanted to plug in and again, just kind of explain what's going on now. All right guys, so again, EPA 10, okay? This is gonna be a slightly different setup than what some of you guys are seeing. Uh, EPA 10, check it out. You're gonna have your DEF metering unit right inside here, but we're not gonna mess with that. Right now, what we're looking at is gonna be in here, okay? You have a NOx outlet. There's two NOx sensors. This is one of them, okay? There's black, and then there is a gray. So this gray one more than likely is gonna be the problem. What I'm gonna do is actually replace the harness. There's two harnesses inside, okay? One, two, okay? They are color-coded. One is gray, one is black. So it kind of gives you an idea of which is which. Gray on the left, black on the right. You're gonna take it all apart. What we're gonna need to do is go ahead and get all this out of the way. Let me go, you show, let me go show you the new parts that we're gonna go ahead and mess with. And uh, all right, guys, so there. quickly wanted to show you what we're looking at and what we're working on. So a few things you're gonna notice is it looks just like a big mess. One thing to do, if I can suggest, is to get familiar with what is what and what goes where, just so you know where these plugs go okay on the harness because you're gonna have everything kind of going everywhere and it's gonna be a little overwhelming so because of that again DLC inlet temp that's gonna be this green one right here this is gonna be your DLC outlet temp this blue one here is gonna be your DPF outlet temp okay one thing that I did find okay, and again we've got a big mess in here what happens typically is the heat will begin to melt everything and kind of uh, start giving you some false contact. So I'm gonna show you the new parts and the new part numbers. But one thing I did find was this. So take a look at this little um, SCR outlet temp sensor. So I'm gonna actually replace the outlet temp sensor as well as the harness. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna do the main harness. I'm sorry, take that back. The sensor harness, the gray one, the black one. We're gonna be doing the um, Knox outlet sensor and we're gonna be doing an SCR temp sensor. So we're gonna replace all that and that should resolve the issues we have. So if we have, let's say a short in this system, it may trigger something else or the sensor itself might be bad, which is gonna be one of your knock sensors. So just to give you an idea of what's going on, um, let me see, there was something I was looking for, bear with me guys. So again, if you can, again, get familiar with this, I'm actually gonna kind of color coat this just because I wanna show you guys, uh, or maybe give you guys some ideas so you don't get all mixed up and all confused. So. Let me start there and then we'll start taking it apart, pulling everything out and okay, going. So through. these are our harnesses, electrical wiring. Okay, this is gonna be your first one. Now this is again for EPA 10, not GHG 14. That's a whole different setup, uh, but the idea is still the same. So if you're having issues, start looking into your harness, your, your sensors or you know whatever you're thinking might be the problem. Don't be afraid to swap out the harness. Again, the harness could be a problem. So in this case, this is one part number ending in 133. And then I have this one ending in 233, okay? I'll open those up right now and show you guys. This is your Knox, should be your Knox outlet. You'll know again because it's gray and it should be a lot longer than the inlet one, okay? Inlet should be black, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And it's gonna be shorter and it literally is gonna go from here to here. So here you go, see? So it should be a black or gray color. And if you follow it, there we go, looks like it might be here. But again, you're gonna figure all that stuff out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, let me get let me get my uh, GoPro on, start taking this stuff apart and we'll go from there. 
All right, guys, so I think we got a decent picture. Hopefully it records good enough. So again, what you're gonna wanna do is just unloosen these, click and go. Do the same thing for all of them, okay? The fun part is when you're actually gonna get over here, you're gonna need a Torx. I think it's gonna be an inverted Torx, uh, like a T25 or T30, something like that. Anyway, that's what you're gonna wanna do. And you're gonna wanna just repeat this all the way through. Okay, now again, except for this one that's burned, you don't have a choice. You're actually gonna have to go ahead and cut that. We have to just kinda go all brand new. Hold on, guys. There we go. So if you can see that down there, Hopefully it's a decent picture. Sorry guys, I'm trying to record and somehow fit my fat head in there. So this one we're probably gonna have to cut, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Uh, let's see here. Can you guys see in there? There we go. Okay, so yeah, you see that, you see what's going on. Good deal, I'll worry about that later. We're gonna have to just cut that. That's just nothing I can, I can't do anything to save that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's get it going here. What the fuck? There we go. All right, so. So again, you're gonna get familiar with this. Pull it all apart, kind of just see where it goes. This is always a good rule of thumb if you can see this, guys. Get the harness out and look at where everything is gonna go. Okay, it's gonna help you guys out tremendously. Same thing goes for the other one. So remember, one is gray. I'm sorry, one is gray, one is black. You're gonna figure out which one goes where. Doesn't really matter. At least here, it doesn't matter. But when you install it, yes, it will matter. Okay, guys, so just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. So just pull that all apart. See again, color coat gray with gray, dark gray with dark gray, and so on. All right, what I really wanna do is I wanna preserve my knock sensor, okay? I don't wanna have to go and spend three, $400 for another knock sensor just because I was trying to rush the job. So take your time when you separate these two, okay? Although the new one is gonna come here, when you separate them, sometimes a lot of the heat makes this very brittle. So it just goes up and down, locks into place, comes right back up. So again, leave this alone. Uh, let's take a look. All right, so there we go. If you can see that, Okay, this is one harness. This is gonna be this harness right here, all right? Now the next thing we're gonna have to do, and this is something I really can't show you just because there isn't enough room, and that's actually get back here and you have to try to separate that. There we go. Actually, it came out fairly easy. Surprise, surprise. It didn't have the red little lock that these normally do have. If it doesn't have it, then it should be a lot easier to remove. If it does, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You're gonna figure that out right now in a sec. Let's see here. Yep, doesn't have it, all right. You get an idea of what we gotta to do to get this shit done and get this stuff out of the way. So let's just take care of the inevitable that's gonna be this little bad boy here. You know what, fuck it, let's cut it over here. I'm gone. Solve that problem. Same thing goes for my Knox sensor. If you guys can see that. There we go. All right, here it is. So if you can see what's going on, we're gonna need to get our 10 mil. And that is so we can get on the other side of this, okay? Take a look. Fucking camera's all over the place, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so if you can see what I'm doing, look where my hand is. That's where you're gonna go ahead and get your side. All right, that's fine. And then you're gonna have to kind of work that out and go from there. So, there's another sensor down there. 
that's gonna be your outlet sensor. So if you take a look, this thing is burnt to a crisp. A lot of times, again, what happens is this gets uh, getting a false contact and will actually ruin things. So if we have a bad contact here, this is gonna be our Knox outlet. So obviously something's gonna go on in here. So keep in mind, when you do that, uh, Okay guys, and here is our old harness. So this is junk. Again, this can cause the entire problem that we have. I'm still gonna replace that knock sensor, so let's get this done. Uh, let's stop talking. So somebody definitely did a hack job here. Worked on it before and didn't put a lot of the hardware back in. So this should just slide right out. And there we go. So here is our other harness that we're gonna replace. So from here, let me get everything cleaned up, uh, organized a lot better, and we will go from there. So uh, let's keep going. GoPro, stop recording. All right, guys, we're back. We went ahead and removed the harness and all we have in here is of course our knock sensor getting routed through. We're gonna be putting the new knock sensor so we're gonna go ahead and remove the old one from down south. I'm gonna do that last. I don't actually need to do that now. Uh, yeah, I think I can do that after. So what we're gonna to want to do now, sorry guys, I'm trying to make sure we get some good, some good footage here. So again, new knock sensor. This is where we're gonna go ahead and install. This is our knocks outlet. There's the part number. Uh, take a look at that for yourself and then of course we have our sensors so we have our harness sensor the black one it's gonna be on your right and then we have the one on the left which is gonna be this one right here okay so pretty easy pretty simple to install these are only gonna go one way sticker facing up sorry sorry Fisser, uh, sticker facing up Okay, keep that in mind. This is where the safety or the little locks or latches are gonna go ahead and catch, okay? You are gonna need some of these little bolts. They should come with it, or they should have them. And the only reason I say that is because the ones that I was working on, or the ones that I took off, well, guess what? They didn't have it. So, surprise, surprise. Uh, we have these, these should fit. Again, pretty, pretty simple, pretty standard, 10 mil. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and get this uh, installed in go from there. So I'm gonna do a little different angle here. I try to do the uh, different head mount, but that's not gonna work just because I keep banging my head onto the cab there. So as you can see here, this has already been mounted and installed. This is gonna connect to your Knox outlet, okay? Again, Knox outlet, that's gonna connect right over here on this side. I'm not gonna install it just yet. So this is gonna go over to our temp sensor that was melted. Okay, this is gonna actually go down to your other temp sensor. Okay, there's two of them, okay? SCR inlet and SCR outlet. So in this case, this is gonna kind of run down, around, and it's gonna connect back over here where you really can't see it. So anyway, I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of swing that out and about just to get that out of the way. Now again, you guys can do this any way you want, whatever way you guys see fit. Uh, this is just the way I'm doing it. So again, my way isn't always the right way. It's just the way I've kind of adapted to doing it. So. For now, let's just get that crap out. All right, next sensor, harness. So again, tape side up, as you can see there. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna go ahead and send that bad boy right in there. All right, 
you guys can see that there's a 10 mil bolt on this side a 10 mil bolt on that side okay so that's all you're gonna have to do is simply Okay guys, and sometimes things just get in the way. So let's go ahead and get this old knock sensor out of the way. Okay guys, so after a few minutes of uh, swearing, saying some really not so nice words. I finally got one of them in. Now the fun part is I'm gonna get the other one back in and then we're gonna go ahead and tuck this all in, make it look pretty, connect everything. Uh, I'm gonna do the sensor on Monday, so unfortunately this is not gonna be all done the same day. I wish I could actually get it done today, but you know, that's just the way things go. All right guys, so all you're gonna do is get your ratchet wrench, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then you're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. One, there's four of them, remember that. Two, three, and then four. All right guys, so we are all done there. Next on my list is we're gonna go ahead and put that knock sensor back to where we had it, which is gonna be this one here. This is your knock inlet. And all you're gonna do is simply tuck it back in. You're gonna have to kind of route these and be a little careful with it. Again, don't uh, don't be too heavy with the hand there when you're ready to go. So remember, these three here are our temp sensors. Okay, this is our DPF, DOC outlet, DPF. I'm sorry, DOC inlet. Okay, we have our two pressure sensors right here, our gray, light, light gray, dark gray, and of course we have our DOC. I'm sorry, our uh, Knox Inlet. So let's go ahead and get this all connected so we can uh, try to get home. All right, there goes Inlet. I'm gonna slide that under, if you can see that. Hope you can see it. Here is our pressure sensor or pressure harness. Plug that in. Don't forget to slide that little red lock over so that it locks it into place. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. And then you're gonna slide that lock into place and you're ready to go. Okay, this can actually stay there. It's not gonna rub against anything. This here, I would probably clean this up a little bit, maybe get some zip ties. That way it's not just kind of bouncing around too much and then you are ready to go. GoPro style. All right guys, so like I said, if you want, just for future reference, you can color coat these. This way you know exactly what goes where. But once you get familiar with it, you're probably not gonna need to do that. So plug it in, you're gonna lock that into place. And then when you are ready to actually set it in place, you can actually kind of push it in like you see there and you can zip tie it after, again, whatever you're comfortable with, and that's pretty much that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the other ones. Uh, over here, we're gonna have our green. Okay, let's see here. So the green one typically kinda gets mounted up like that. That's usually the way it comes from the factory, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, as you can see there, and then I'm just gonna mount that up right there, lock it into place. There it is. Now it is actually missing two of the little screws that kind of hold this plate into place. Actually, no, yeah, it is, but that's okay because it's secured by the pressure sensor. So then you're gonna do the same thing when it comes to your sensor here. Plug it in. You're gonna lock that in. 
you're all done. Okay, so now we just gotta find a place to put that. Maybe I put that in the wrong spot. I'm not too sure. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and figure all this crap out right now in a second. Yeah, all right. So anyway, you guys get the idea. So we're gonna go ahead and zip tie all this, zip tie this, make it all nice. We're gonna go ahead and put our new knock sensor in, our new sensor our new temperature sensor that you can see back over here kind of dangling off in the screen. And then you're pretty much ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and test it, make sure everything is good. Hopefully the fault code goes away and you are all set to go. So uh, anyway, keep going. GoPro stop. All right guys, so I kind of fumbled this one up a little bit. Uh, there's actually two places to mount the base. You can mount it here to the side. There's also one over here to the other side. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. And then we're, we're pretty much done. So anyway, once I get that mounted up securely, again, we're gonna connect everything. We're gonna cover it up, make sure everything is nice and secure. And then we're gonna go ahead and start testing. So hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit when it comes to harnesses and any other issues that you may have. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. Go okay, post guys, So hopefully this gives you a better view and a better idea of what we're doing. So went ahead and tied this all up, kind of made it all nice and pretty. There should, there should be a little grommet that holds this down or kind of helps it stay snug so it doesn't rub around but it doesn't have it so I'm gonna zip tight and secure it as best I can once I put the new knock sensor in we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on okay and the cover is this one right here so the cover literally just sits right on top and keeps it keeps everything all nice and uh, clean or as clean as can be so again once we get that all done we'll be all set I'll do a verification as far as run the truck uh, make sure I have no more check engine lights or any more issues and we're ready to go from there. So for now, I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to get underneath temp sensor and go okay, for it. So we are done connecting everything, connecting our new harness. We have our new Knox outlet sensor. We've got everything plugged in. The only thing you're going to need to do next is plug in your sensor harness or your one box harness over to the main harness, which goes all the way up and over down to the ACM. So once you connect that, you're gonna put your cover back on there. We, we still need to kind of secure some of these. Uh, I definitely don't want these just bouncing around and you know possibly getting burned up again. So anyway, we're gonna get this all looking pretty. Once we do, we are all set to go. We're gonna connect upstairs to the program and let's see what it says. So okay, let's take guys, a look. happy Monday. We are back. We have everything installed in our one box EPA 10 as far as the harness goes temp sensor and the Knox outlet sensor go. So again, we have a Cascadia. It's got 780,000 miles. Not too bad. It is a global truck. So let's go ahead and launch the software. Let's see what it says. I got to cycle the key. Give me one second. Let's see what's going on here. Maybe I did that one. All right, guys, let's cycle the key. Make sure we have a good connection. We've got a good power source. Uh, yeah, we've got power. Let's let the program do what it's gonna do. And let's see what it says. All right, guys, program is launched. We got the little malfunction light. That always pops up as it should for a few seconds and then it will go away. So let's take a quick look. We are connected. Uh, trying to get a better angle, but that glares something else. All right, let's see here. Oh. Guess what? Looks like I, had to, I have to connect over to the server and see what's going on because I am now limited. I have not done an update or connected to the server to Detroit or Diagnostic and they do not like that. So anyway, let's take a quick look. Let's see what the code says. I need to call Detroit and have them fix whatever crap I've got going on on this end. So the good thing is I have no knock sensors down at the bottom. I do need to start the truck up. So this way I can let it warm up and make sure everything is reading properly. So as of now, no check engine lights, no anything like that, which is good. And now I have to let the truck warm up. Oil pressure is good. I like that. I like that. All right, guys, there we go. So low beam, low beam. That might be when you guys install the LED lights, you'll get some of those things. Uh, door still or door sill lamp. Those are the light bulbs that are burned out. Also, if you have any light bulbs that are burned out here or on the doors, it will generate that little code. Uh, not necessarily a code here for you, but it may say something to the effect of cab 33, CHS, blah, 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 blah. There you go, see CHS 71. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna let this warm up. I gotta call Detroit. I gotta get this thing resolved because again, I have not connected to the server in a long time. So let me do that. 
let it warm up. Be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. Made a quick phone call, spoke to Detroit, got everything resolved, uplit, uh, upload, download, whatever needed to be done was done. Updates all done. Uh, let's connect back to our truck. We're gonna go over here to our fault codes and see if anything new popped up. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully we had it all resolved as far as uh, Dan with the after treatment side. So we have no issues there with the Knox outlet and anything with the circuit. So typically when you have a SCR outlet, Knox sensor circuit fail, that you, typically means the sensor itself is no good or you have a short in the system, more than likely sensor or harness related. So that is done. I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. We are gonna go ahead and go into a service routine just to mess around. We're gonna go to the system and then you can actually look at the temperatures for the SCR um, system. Okay, or even check your voltages. Whatever it is you want to do, this is where you would do it. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go back, review uh, SCR outlet voltage. So not too bad. I don't see anything, any red flags right now. Uh, again, I still need to let it warm up. I'm only at about 113 degrees. So I could probably try doing a regen just to see a few things. What are excuse me, what our pressures are on the one box. We can see what the NOx efficiency is. Obviously, once this begins to do a warm up, you're gonna see your efficiency here, which again needs to be 70% or higher. Uh, these are all your temps. So let's just let it warm up. I'm gonna try to do a regen. Once it does that, I still wanna try to troubleshoot the fault code for the fuel pressure, okay? Which I, I did mention that in the beginning of the video, which is right there. Fuel rail pressure low, SPN 157. FMI 16. So again, we're gonna leave that for another video, but I still wanna do some testing just to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna stop the video here, let it warm up. We'll go from okay, there. Okay guys, so we let it warm up uh, just enough, I think anyway, to kind of get the uh, temperature cool at 150. Uh, I still can't do the fuel test, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. What I do wanna focus on is the NOx situation. So I wanna make sure that I don't have any other codes come back in reference to the um, right here, in, in reference to this. Okay, in reference to the circuit, circuit failed high, whatever's going on. I don't wanna have any issues here, so this would be a great way to verify your repair. So remember, do a regen, you can either do the entire regen or just let everything get hot, let it run for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, any problems should present themselves, so any problems here in the DOC pressure, any issues with the SCR system. Um, again, once you start to see that these numbers start to give you something, and you see some kind of efficiency, at that point you can either let it run complete through the cycle or you can just cancel it and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is let it start doing the regen and uh, let's see what it says. Okay guys, so we are about 10 minutes into a parked regen, uh, maybe a little, a little less than 10 minutes into a parked regen. Temperatures look good, pressure looks good. Let's go over to the SCR side. Uh, NOx efficiency says 100%. Uh, maybe because the sensor's new, but it just started doing the regen, so that number will definitely change. It'll probably drop to the 90%. Uh, again, depending on all the one boxes, this one box I don't believe is that old, so that's probably why the efficiency is very high. So, uh, so far so good. I'm gonna let it run a little bit more just again, see what these temperatures are when it comes to the DOC inlet, DOC outlet. Now, officially my diesel doser injector behind the turbo has not begun to spray diesel, so I'm not uh, I'm not worried about that too much uh, right now, okay? Again, I just wanna see what the numbers are. I wanna make sure things are reading properly or correctly, and it looks like they are. So that is a good thing. Again, efficiency, that means the knock sensor's reading. Again, 100%, that will change once the regen goes a little bit further into the pro uh, process. So right now, again, 10, 10 minutes in, there you go, not too bad. So it looks like this is a successful repair. The only thing I want to do now is let the temperature go up for the coolant so that I can continue to test the fuel system. Okay, fuel system integrity check. Oh, it's green, okay, perfect. So anyway, I'm gonna end this video. Again, this is for the fault code SPN3226 FMI3 and SPN3226 FMI4. So SCR, NOx outlet sensor, circuit failed high, circuit failed low. So I think we've got it all taken care of. Guys, if you have any questions, I hope this video was helpful to some of you. Uh, we are all set to go. Guys, have a great day. Appreciate you all watching. Thank you. Oh, also, don't forget, smash that like button. That's right.
smash it. That helps me out a little bit. Um, if you like what you see, perfect. Thanks again.